Canberra to have the highest quality builders in Australia? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I've got my stein of coffee and I thought we'd look at this article because Canberra has a plan to crack down on their builders and get the highest quality buildings in Australia from the highest quality builders. Because we all know if government legislation fails, you just add more legislation. Just grow the government. Grow the government and it'll fix it all. Can you tell I'm a bit cynical about it all right now, guys? Can you tell? So, Canberra builders could face further crackdowns, <laughs> crackdowns, as ACT seeks highest quality buildings in Australia. Well, that's all well and true. That's good. Fantastic. Good. What about the 20 years of crappy buildings you have that's on the market that people are bought in good faith? What are you going to do about those? Sorry? Sorry? I can't, I can't hear that? You're, you're, you're running off and... and you know, taking away moral rights of our citizens? Yeah, good. Ah, politicians. So, directors of building companies responsible for substandard works in Canberra could be held personally liable for defects under new government laws part proposed today by the ACT government. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. That's I like that idea. That, that lines up with the directors and developers having to sign personal guarantees. But, okay... Here in Queensland, you when you builder makes a claim for money, they'll send you, you know, a stat deck sign saying they paid all the subbies. They paid all the subbies. We just looked at the Walton collapse where all the subbies weren't paid. Because I bet you Walton was still, you know, making claims and getting paid from their, you know, architects or project managers, whatever. Now, those documents that they signed, that stat deck, that's an oath under the Oath Act. Now, recently there was a case, and I can't remember the name, so the lawyers can let me know in the comments, uh, where that was thrown out of court. When it was proved that the subby didn't get paid, even though the director had signed that sat deck, the judge said it was unreasonable to expect the director to be over all aspects of the business. So it, was worth, it wasn't worth the paper it was written on. An oath under the oath acts. So there you go. That, that's, that's where I'm cynical about all this type of stuff. Paper is cheap. It is completely cheap. You know, we're not in you know medieval times where you have to print things by hand. It's cheap. Words are cheap. It's just how much you can defend to take it to court and how much money you can burn. That's the problem. So ACT Building Quality Minister Gordon Ramsay has fronted an... Is that really his name? Has fronted an inquiry into the territory's building industry, which is examining, among other issues, how defects are currently managed in Canberra. Well, maybe you need to look at the procurement process, the conflicts of interest that are inherent in it, that actors that are following the law get less work because you're difficult to deal with. He told the committee the government was planning new legislation that would make directors of licensed corporations personally liable for financial penalties and requirements for rectification if defective buildings had occurred on their watch. Wow. Okay. The legislation would also give industry and consumers more information and tools to progress rectification work if a building does not meet the standards that Canberrians expect, Mr. Ramsey said. I bet you people will find ways around this. I bet you people will find ways around this. The proposal would also provide more op options for owners to seek rectification if building quality was not up to scratch, Mr. Ramsey said. The independent regulator's ability to respond to uh, builders flouting the rules will be broadened by giving new powers to building inspectors and introducing court enforceable undertakings for rectification work. Okay, that all sounds good, but the, the building inspector that implements that will be blacklisted in the industry unofficially. All these dodgy people, all these developers are going, nah, he's too difficult, don't work with him. I mean, guys, that's the problem. That's We already have systems in place that should work fine. We already have legislation in place that should be fine. We already have a building code that is completely acceptable, that has um, you know, standards that these buildings aren't even meeting. Mr. So we need more legislation. We need more legislation. That'll fix it. Mr. Ramsey said the government was also keen to tackle the problem of phoenixing, where 
builders declared insolvency in order to dodge litigation or debit, only to re-emerge with a new company structure a short time later. Well, yes, this is a big issue. This is a big issue. You know? He said one option being considered by the ACD government was allowing orders to be issued to people close to a company that has been dissolved. We have all seen instances where building corporations have produced substandard buildings and when le legitimately called into account has wa have wound up leaving the cost of rectification to the owners, he said. There is clearly an additional responsibility of the federal government to reduce the negative impacts of phoenixing within the building and construction sector. What we need to do, what we need to do is look at the two certification model that I was proposing and I will link to that video. I'm going to write down, what is this? About five, what is it? Five, fifty, oh, six minutes. I'll write that down here. We'll be talking for six minutes. We need to look at that. We need to look at the way buildings are procured as well. Two months ago, the ACT Labor Conference passed a resolution calling on the government to establish a licensing scheme for building developers. Will that make a difference? Will that make a difference? Will this drive up costs? Let me know what you think, guys, because I'm, I'm a bit cynical about it all. I really am. The motion would also require developers to demonstrate they could afford to rectify building defects in an attempt to crack down on phoenixing. I would say, rather than, maybe the developers need to, maybe the developers need to put money aside for a period of time for the project. Maybe in government bonds that could earn is represent interest, but still set aside, held in trust to address any defects for 10, 20 years. That's going to up the cost of these projects. But maybe that's something that needs to happen. Or maybe that's something that developers could do and market to have a competitive advantage. We don't need, well, that's the thing. We don't need this, the government stepping in. We need consumers to be smarter and to be empowered to demand things. You know, where's your, where's your, um, you know, your Phoenix, you know, Phoenix proof guarantee stamp on a project that could be a marketable product Two certification guarantee, boom, stamp on a project, you know, um, uh, defects for oh, 20 year offset guarantee warranty, boom, you know, we put aside this much of the construction in bonds that's going to be used if needed to rectify your project held in a trust would that inspire you with confidence in buying an apartment it would inspire me with some confidence these are the things that we need to start seeing develop here will the market be ballsy enough to do it themselves will all these superstar developers be willing enough to do it themselves i, I have no idea i have no idea but the, my instincts tell me it costs money so maybe not, maybe not, or maybe you know, line line the uh, the building with gold and silver. <laughs> There's your defects right there. I think we have one client and one you know gold plated taps everywhere. So, Mr. Ramsey said the government's current uh, consultations included licensing and accountability measures for people designing and building, as well as people contracting for off the plan sales. Well, yes. He said he wanted the ACT to have the highest quality buildings in Australia and that the industry regulator should be empowered to be the tough cop on the beat when it came to improving building quality. So in general, you know, I, I, I appreciate what he's trying to do, but I'm a bit cynical about it. I think, I think this will lead people into a false sense of security and certainty when there needs to be much more drastic, much more drastic changes to the way that buildings are procured and to how what consumers demand from their apartment builders so key points new laws would strengthen regulators to be the tough cop on the beat the government says under the laws company directors could be personally liable for financial penalties the ACC is considering whether people close to a company could be held to account even after liquidation well, guys, what do you think? Are you as cynical as me? Do you think these will be good changes? I think there's some good ideas here. I like the idea of company directors being personally liable. 
I would want that to be just a standard part. When you sign your your purchase order, you offer the plan purchase, you get handed a copy of a letter signed by the director personally guaranteeing your apartment for any defects. That would inspire confidence. And we don't need the government to set that up. We need people in the industry to have the guts to put their money where their claims are. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you all later. Bye for now.